Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number four in our incredible new tutorial series where you're going to learn to code in Python or you're going to die trying. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice big cup of strong black coffee. And I am going to need you guys to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. Okay, what we're going to do today is we are going to be looking at the solution to the homework that I gave you in lesson number three. So I will need you to call up your most excellent idle integrated development environment. And as you're calling up idle, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's look at the solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number three. First of all, were any of you all successful in making this work? Seem like a pretty interesting, a pretty simple program to me, but I would be willing to bet that over half of you probably were not able to do it. And probably you ran into one of the things that I warned you about in lesson number one and two. Okay, so you really sort of had enough information to dig in and kind of figure out what was happening. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you a solution and then we're going to talk about it because really kind of a it, it's kind of a, a really important thing that we're going to learn in this. And so we come over here, we have idle up and remember we come up and say new file and then we come up with a file that we can write our program in. And I hate this, that it makes these windows bigger than what you can see. And I think I have to do it like this. I'm sorry, I gotta do a little Windows management here. Let me see if I can cheat a little. No, I gotta bring this up. I gotta keep doing this until you can see the whole thing or it will go off the edge of the page. I will try to figure out a better way to have this come up in the future. You aggravating thing. This is really aggravating. Okay. So we're going to come down like this. Okay. So now I have a new file. Let's go ahead and save it. So I'm going to do a file and I'm going to save as. And then remember, I am going to uh, my documents. Ah, oh, man. This is very, very annoying. Where was it? Okay. I'm in my Python. And this I will call homework three. And then it's going to be a Python file. So I will put it like that. Okay. So now I got it saved. Now I need to get out of your way. And in the future, I'll try to get these things fired off a little bit better. Okay. So remember, what was your assignment? Get a first number from a user, get a second number from the user, add the two numbers together, and then print out a nice formatted result. And so let's do this. Let's say x is equal to input. And what are we going to get from the user? Please enter your first number. And then we're going to format it nicely by putting a space after that. Then we will close our quote, close our string, and then we will close the parentheses. Then we will say y is equal to input. And then we will say, please, please always be polite in these things. Say please. We're a polite society. At least we should be. Okay. So always say please. Please enter your second uh, number, put your colon, put your space, uh, close the string and then close the input. And then what we are going to do is we are going to say Z is equal to X plus Y. Okay. And then we're going to say print and we are going to say, uh, <clears throat> let, me, let me do it this way. X the variable and then the string space plus space, and then X plus Y. So I put a comma Y and then the string space 
equal space. We've done this before. You should know this. And then print Z. Okay, like that. That is pretty good. We should be good to go here. And we are then going to come up here to run. And then we're going to run module. Yes, save it. Okay, I hate that. Okay, please enter your first number. Okay, I will put in the number two. Okay, please enter your second number, the number seven. And then what do we get? Two plus seven equal 27. Denied. Did you guys get this error? Okay, did you get this error? What's going on? Okay, what is going on? Because I can say x equal two, and I can say x equal seven. I mean, I can say x equal two. I can say y equals seven, and I can say z is equal to x plus y, and then I can say print. I can say print z. All right. And it works. So why does this work and why does this not work? What did I tell you in lesson one and lesson two is like the number one thing that is going to cause you problems in Python. And that is you are thinking a variable is one type and Python is thinking the variable is another type. OK, so what you thought is you thought when you put in the number two, you were putting in a number. But Python decided to read it not as a number, but decided to read it as a string. And so you were working in a, in a world where you thought you were using numbers, but Python was using strings. And so let me show you here. What if I say x is equal to the string two? And what if I say y is equal to the string seven? And then I say z is equal to x plus y. And then I say print z. What do I get? I get 27 because it was a string. Now here, obviously, I entered it as a string. But when you just do an input, you don't know what Python's going to do. And it happened to read it in as a string. And then when you said plus, OK, when you said plus, Python was interpreting that as, well, x is a string, y is a string. He must want me to add one string to the end of the other. And so it was doing something like, let's say, print <coughs> hello, and then uh, plus, and then world, like that. And then what does it do? Ooh, it didn't like that. Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't close that last. I didn't close the last string. OK, so I'm going to print the string hello plus the string world, close it out there, and then it prints hello world. <laughs> so you see, Python will add things. It's just like, OK, if this guy wants me to add the character 2 to the character 7, I'll put 7 on the end of 2, and you'll get 27. OK, so I kind of set you up for this, didn't I? I sort of deliberately did this so that you'll make this mistake. And when you have strange and unexpected results when you're coding, one of the first things that you got to think about is you've got to think about variable types. So how would we handle this? OK, you got to kind of force things to be the variable that you want. And so what I'm going to do up here, I'm going to come in and let's see. One thing I could do is I could come down here and I could just say x is equal to the float of x. And that way I know that I'm going to force if if x was the character to if I float it, it's going to force it to now be the number two, the floating point number two. OK, and then I could say y is equal to float y. So it takes the character two and it changes it to the number two and then it puts it back in the variable y. Now, I don't have to float Z because if I'm adding a float and a float, I should get a float. So now let's run this thing and see what happens. OK, save it. Please enter your first number. OK, I'll put the two. Please enter your second number. I'll put the seven. Boom! Two plus seven is nine. Uh-huh. Look at that. OK, so you see it works. 
you learned a very important lesson here and that is is that yeah it's great in Python that you don't have to declare your variables but you might be working with one thing thinking that you're in one type of variable and Python might be doing something completely different and this will create all types of difficult problems. All right, now let's go back and look. There's another way that you can do this, which is even probably a little bit easier if I can get back to my program. Here it is. Okay. One thing you can do is instead of putting in these separate steps, you can just force it to do what you want at the input. And so I could say float of input Okay, so what does this do? This prompts, you got to start at the innermost of the parentheses. What does this do? It gives the user the prompt, please input your number. Then what does it do? It inputs what he enters. And what we learned is it inputs it as a string, okay? And then what we do is in these outer parentheses, we float the string to become a float. So now X should be a float. And same thing here. Notice how your parentheses always have to match. I have one open, I have two open, I have one closed, I have two closed. Those things all have to match up. And then here I am going to float and then I got to close it out over here. And now let's run this thing and see what happens. Run module, okay. And please enter your first number, it's a two. Please enter your second number, it's a seven. Two plus seven is nine. Boom! All right, guys, that's even an easier way to do it. Okay, you like that? You like that? Okay, I think that's pretty neat. So now let's come back over here to our Python program. Here we go. Okay, so we printed X. What else could we do? Okay, let me let me go back over here and show you something. I floated it, and so what did it do? It gave me floating point numbers, 9.0, 2.0, 7.0. It did them as floats. Now watch this. Okay, what if instead of floating it, I made it an integer with an int? Okay, and I made it an int like like that. Okay, now let's run that. I hate this. Okay. Run module. Save it. Okay. Okay, now my first number is going to be a 2. My second number is going to be a 7. What? Do I have an error in this program? I think I just entered it wrong. Okay. Okay, put in a two and then put in a seven and two plus seven is nine. Now, do you see how it made these integers? Okay, it made them integers, right? It forced them to be an integer, so no decimal point. All right, so so like, let's, let's try this. Okay, so with them as integers, let's say I say, uh, let's say I'm gonna run this again Okay, and I'm going to say my first number is 2.5, and, and what do I get? I get an error because it read the string 2.5, and then it tried to turn it into an int, and an int cannot be made into 2.5, and so the program crashes because you are giving it 2.5 and you're telling it to make it an int and it's not going to make an int out of a float and so that is where you got the error. Let me try that one more time just to make sure that that's what happened. Okay, so I'm going to run module and I am going to input the number 2.5. Okay, and it crashes the program because 2.5 is a floating point number and it doesn't want to change it to an int. And so again, unexpected results if you are not keeping track of your variables properly. And so let's go back to our program here. And let's also see like, what else could I do? What if I made it a string str and str, what do you think is gonna happen now? Okay, I'm going to put 2.5. Is it going to crash or not? 
not going to crash because it's reading it as a string. And then I'm going to put 5.5. Not going to crash. It's reading it as a string. But what did it do? The string 2.5 plus the string 5.5, it concatenates them. And it just puts the string 2.5 and then appends to it 5.5. OK, so that's kind of how it works. And so that is the solution to the problem. And I did this deliberately to set you up. So you will be very, very mindful to always keep track of what variable type and it is very good to try to you know whenever you can to sort of force things into the right type of variable so you don't end up with some random things so leaving this as a float and leaving this as a float all right i think that is pretty good and pretty cool so let's see what all we've learned now we know how to work with different variable types we know how to get input from the user we know how to do basic math operations of add subtract multiply divide mod and power we know how to do those things we know how to manipulate one variable type to another variable type and we know how to use arrays okay so i think that given that we've just gone through four lessons I think you've learned a lot and we sort of are establishing that foundation and we'll start doing some really sophisticated stuff but I'm going to take you step by step to get you there in a way that you don't get frustrated and don't get lost hey guys I hope you are having as much fun taking these lessons as I'm having making them we're going to be doing some really cool stuff we will get to some really cool stuff I'm going to hook Python up to Arduino where you're going to have Python interacting with Arduino. We're going to be doing some crazy stuff, but we have to establish the foundation so that you can actually know how to program on your own and not just copy and paste what I'm doing. So hope you guys will be patient with me as we learn these foundations. Ho uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.